Beating Diamond and Pearl is an easy, endless process, and I'm like a cell cycle starting over again from anew. Only this time, I'm only using Bidoof, the Greek god of semen, as my one and only Pokemon for this entire run. As you can see, there are a lot of imitators, deceitful losers, trying to copy my dearest Bidoof's sacrilegious moveset. But do not be swayed by these impersonators. Only my Bidoof is the true arbiter of semen and all things holy. Rourke is the first buffoon to get a taste of Bidoof pain. Bidoof dies into his hentai collection to work himself up. He gets stronger and stronger, increasing his stats. After this dumbass roly-poly attack from the Geodude, I quickly use a potion to heal off all damage. This potion raises my HP almost to full, and there's no way this Geodude can kill me without critting. <clears throat> Rourke is the first buffoon to get a taste of Bidoof pain. The clip you saw earlier was just a mistranslation of the Bidoof Bible. As someone famous once said, the best defense is a good semen. Bidoof quickly curls up his penis, retracting it into itself. The poor Geodude in front of me is shocked, he doesn't know what to do, as Bidoof sits up in its face. One obstacle down. Next up is Onyx, which I just set up in its face. The rapture cannot be stopped. Everything is set in place. After one rock smash followed by a potion, and then another rock smash, Onyx falls. Cranidos is the final obstacle. And instead of attacking me, decides to give me some stink eye, which God eats up. A punishing rock smash to its cranium leaves it dead, banishing it to the shadow realm. Gardenia is my next victim. My opponent this time is a couple of ball sacks, trying to take God down. But Bidoof does not give a shit, and proceeds to set up to plus 6 attack and special attack. Bidoof is one of the kings of giving some head, and gives these paratesticles a run for their money. A vegan turtle shows up next and decides they want some head to butt action as well. At this point Gardenia is trembling in fear, but tries to keep it cool sending out her last Pokemon. Her last attempt of salvaging anything from this match is to offer some roses as a peace offering to Bidoof. Bidoof denies Roserade's pleas to get into heaven and sends her straight to hell. Clapped Gardenia so hard she started clapping for me. The theory of evolution appears, but Bidoof denies it, claiming that there's no evidence that it evolves. I made my way to the third and fourth gym, but my footage got corrupted so all I have is this. Unfortunately, I can't show the third and fourth gym battles. Forgive me, for I have sinned in trusting too much into Elgato game capture. Perhaps in the future, we will get a light novel adaptation of the Bidoof Bible. Some extra chapter bonuses that shows the juicy third gym and fourth gym battles of Bidoof. After soliciting untaxed money from the church followers of Bidoof Cathedral, I became rich and then used some of that money to buy ethereal liquid to offer to our lord and savior. The fifth gym battle awaits. At this point, my devotion to god has shown its merits. Now that I have double team and swords dance, I no longer feel emotion. I don't fear. My combination of funds and moveset, X items and potions are too much for any gym leader. Even a Colberberry couldn't save this Gengar. Miss Magius comes in, Miss Magius goes out. The next come shop crusader is Byron, who has the audacity to send out a metal frisbee. After two whole minutes of divine setup, Beautiful was ready to assert its dominance. Bye bye, dinner plate. Steelix, the metal collection of rocks, comes out. At this point, I am plus six evasion plus 6 defense, and plus 6 attack. My semen levels are off the charts. Trick Room ends here, allowing me to attack first. Steelix only has a 33% chance of hitting me, and even if it does, it needs to crit in order to kill. Edith reincarnates itself, and tries again. Now we're back in the same spot, another 33% to hit me, and... In the ultimate anime moment, my beauty of survived through the power of friendship. But it looks like these anime writers are looking in the long term, preserving this battle into several episodes. This isn't your singular season, one hit and done anime. This is a triple A experience. In this arc, 
we make the executive decision to use a dire hit. One crit. Two crit. Three crit. And to top it all off, how about a fourth crit? Byron just got obliterated. Can this bitch beat me? Hell no. I set up to plus six everything and proceed to start genociding Candace's whole team. Starting with this icicle penis tree stump. A pair of big ass legs comes after me next. But unfortunately for Medicham, praise be doof, lands the ultimate crit. Sneasel dies so fast I didn't even notice. Candace breaks on her last resort, sending out Snow Satan. After Bidoof gives this Pokemon some good head, Candace coughs up her badge. These two semi demons won't let me progress through the story without having two Pokemon, so I'm forced to have Chimchar in my party. A worthy sacrifice to put these fools in their place. At this point, me and Bidoof are on the same wavelength. No Pokemon trainer is going to come between us. With a butt plug inserted, Cyrus approaches me. But not even Crobat can handle Bidoof's head. Bidoof proves that only it can master time and space. Minato's cousin, Volkner, is my final obstacle before tackling on the Elite Four. I set up to plus six attack and speed. Bidoof unleashes its reckoning. Ambipom comes out and makes the foolish decision to try and contest Bidoof and gets absolutely okayed. Our favorite electric type, Octillery, is next to get some head. This shinobi is now left to its last option. Intimidates to reduce my attack by two stages. Luxray barely lives and pops its berry. However, the RNG gods are on my side and Luxray flinches. One more dosage of head finishes him and completes my collection. It's now Elite Four time. Aaron, who loves bugs, must be immediately put down. Boosting to plus six and everything, Beedo grabs a holy bug swatter and slaps the shit out of every single Pokemon in Aaron's party. Whole Bertha is next. And her strategy was to be toxic, but unfortunately God doesn't have time for that. Beedo whips out some holy lotion and slathers it all over these crusty ground type Pokemon. Bertha's party cannot handle the moisturization and falls to a fury of ice beams. Flint is next up to the bat, and heat is no issue for Bidoof. Just like Bane, Bidoof was not only born in the fire, it was molded by it, not adopted like this Flint wannabe. Lucian, the dripped out psychic, the last person to stand in front of my waifu. I get to plus six and everything in front of Mr. Mime's cock and proceed to go ham, landing a crit in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then some. On the final stretch home, this is my move set. As much as it pains me, I must defeat my waifu. My penis is churning in its pants in anticipation of this fight. Time for the true reckoning begins. I set up the plus six everything. A thunderbolt crit sautés the fuck out of Spiritomb. Then proceeds to sauté the fuck out of Lucario as well. A disgusting sea slug enters the battlefield, and I don't like it so I immediately have my Bidoof give it some head. And not just once, not twice, but three times. Another bouquet of roses stands before me. Let's rectify that. A water snake tries to eat my butthole, so I electrify its butthole. My butthole is beginning to quiver in excitement. The climax of the anime approaches. Bidoof senses how hard my butthole is quivering and does the same thing. Cynthia frantically keeps healing her Garchomp before the last crunch seals her fate. Bidoof Sama grows to level 77. And I beat the game with a Bidoof. Belly full of spermatocytes and absolutely no mercy. Bidoof. Clamps to the top. The God.